Greetings. Welcome to Nature's Bounties. Nature's Bounties. What a wonderful thing to know that God has a lot of bounties for us in nature. I thank God for that. I will continue to admire those things that God has made that will keep us in the best of health as we continue to live on those things that he has made for us. Let us pray. Thank you, Holy Father, for you are a good Father indeed. Thank you for providing so many wonderful things for us. Help us to continue to live in such a way to show our appreciation for these things and to live for you in keeping our body in the best of health. This is our plea, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I've thought about, and many people have asked me the question, what do I put in my food to give it a nice aroma and to enhance the taste? Especially when individuals decide that they want to stop eating animal foods, as more and more evidences are showing to us that the use of plant-based foods are healthier than living on animal food. And therefore, when our taste buds are used to certain tastes from the animal sources, we often would like to do our best, especially if we are the head of the kitchen as a woman or maybe a man too. And then we want to be sure that our family do not suffer in terms of admiration of their food and wanting to eat it compared to before. So the issue of spices and healthy living comes up. How do I use these things to help my food taste good and yet remain healthy? So spices and seasoning herbs are the seeds, the bark, the roots, the flowers, the buds, even the stem of plants. And they are used to enhance the flavor of our food. Which ones are good? How do we use them? These are questions that we want to look at so that we can make the best choices to enhance the flavor of our food and yet for our food to be healthy. There are many substances out there that are very unhealthy that we buy and put in our food. So we need to be cautious to know which ones are good? Now, being in natural healthcare, you can expect what my answer will be. Choose the natural. Choose the ones that are close to nature as much and as far as possible. If we choose that which is close to nature, we can't go wrong a lot. Of course, there are poisonous herbs out there. We cannot say, oh yeah, choose anything out there. Yeah, there are poisonous herbs. So we need to know which ones we can choose from that will help to keep our food tasty and yet to keep our body healthy. Now, there is something that has been ascertained. Our taste buds have been developed to appreciate one thing or the other in infancy. When we came to the world as adults and we were young, we developed what we like in terms of taste and what we do not like right from infancy, before the age of one, two, thereabout. Also, if we put anything in our mouth that is dry, we are not likely to feel the taste, to know how it tastes, to taste it. Therefore, there is a need for us to wet our food when we put it in the mouth with the saliva for us to appreciate the taste and for the food to be well digested. And we will appreciate natural tasting foods the more we chew our food and allow it in our mouth to, to, for our saliva to really wet it. Experiment with it. Chew a little longer those whole grains and you begin to see the sweetness that you get from it. But when we have ground them and we make them into what is called pap in many places, and we drink them as it were, and we just swallow them very quickly. We will need a lot of sweetener for it to have taste. But if we chew a little longer and we allow it to 
swirl in our mouth for a little while and mix thoroughly with saliva, it tastes sweeter in our mouth. So our taste buds are in different locations in our mouth. The tip of our tongue will taste something sweet. The sides will taste salty. And at the back will taste bitterness. It's interesting how God made man. We are indeed fearfully and wonderfully made. When I see all these things, I read them, and they come to life for me personally, it's thrilling. It's such an enjoyable life to understand these simple things of nature and to see them come alive in life. Not just to roll on life and go on in and out to do things, but to take time to appreciate all of these things that God has made for us. So our taste buds have been developed from childhood. We have learned how, what we want or like to eat. I have met a little girl about eight or nine, as I have people come to visit and sometimes with families. And I used to say, I have not met many little girls that do not like bananas. This girl did not like bananas. Mm -mm. I was surprised. And then after asking more questions, I found out that she actually liked the variety of bananas that are available in her immediate environment because that's what she was used to eating. And that answered my question because I was surprised at first because the bananas we have, she never liked to eat it. Breakfast table, this girl will push a banana and say, I do not want. And I was surprised. How can a little girl of about seven or eight not like bananas? Usually, everybody seems to like bananas because they're simple, universal, more available fruits that is all over in several places and children love to eat it. So taste buds are developed very quickly with whatever we are exposed to. I like to read this. It says there is a saying that flavor is the soul of food and the spices is the soul of flavor. Spices and herbs, they are the soul of flavor. So when we want flavor out of our food, we need some seasonings to get ah, the flavor from the food. Now, there are several things that we use to, to make our food tasty. There are seasonings. One primary universal one is salt. Salt. Now, if our food are devoid of salt entirely. <laughs> it is, people will say, perfectly tasteless. In fact, some people will use the word, this doesn't make sense, what's wrong? Well, I made the mistake once and I appreciate salt from that moment on more than I did before then. I baked bread and I forgot to add salt. And I found as I had read before that if you do not add any sweetener to your bread, people will still appreciate and eat it because there's a natural sweetener in the wheat. As you chew the bread, you will enjoy the taste. But if you forget to put salt, flat. Well, my children at that time were younger than they are now. They are adults now. After the bread was baked, of course, it smelled very well. And as usual, they expected to have bread and to enjoy bread. But as soon as they started tasting it, they were tasting the bread before I did. I could see expressions on their faces. And I was wondering what was going on. Because they could not really explain why. They've been eating bread from mommy's kitchen for a while. And they've been baking bread too with me. But this time around, it seemed something was wrong. They looked at each other. And then I tasted the bread and I said, oh, there's no salt. Well, I ate a lot of that bread <laughs> myself. Because they had one reason or the other. Oh, no, I'll pass. Oh, well, ah, no, I don't want bread this morning. Until that bread finished, they did not want to eat it because there was no salt. I forgot entirely to add salt to the dough when I was making the bread. So that told me at that time and from then on, hey, you make bread, don't forget to, to put salt. Very, very important. Salt is needed in, our, in the food. But it must not be in excess. Like everything that we do that is natural. And see the way God put things in nature. He puts it in such a way that you can take what you need and leave the rest. You cannot just take all and bombard yourself with the bounties of nature. Then you'll be overwhelmed. 
there are other things that we use to season and bring out the flavor in our food apart from salt. And I'll make a list of some that I'm very familiar with, which are more general than many others. Bay leaf is an example. Where do we use bay leaf for in our food? It's very good in beans. In fact, it's said that when we put bay leaf in our, say we're cooking like six or four to six cups of beans, and we put a whole bay leaf, it usually comes in whole most of the time, into the beans. It enhances the flavor, but it also helps to get the gas, which beans usually will have. That's an example of other things that we can use herbs. Then there are what they call the curry leaves. Many people call several leaves curry leaf. The basil, they call curry leaf in many places, the sweet basil. There is also many varieties of basil in every place. And all of these are in the same family and they are wonderful things to season both stew, soup, even rice and beans and all the others. Some use cinnamon, but I was trained in, in my natural health care work not to use cinnamon a lot in seasoning of food because it is a stomach irritant. Yes, as medicine, but then as food, it should be discouraged and not live on cinnamon rolls, cinnamon this and that because of that part of cinnamon that makes it an irritant. Hot peppers are the same in that category of irritant. When peppers are cooked, they become irritating to the mucous membrane of our digestive system. Cayenne pepper is a wonderful herb that is used in reversal of many, many health issues because it is a vasodilator. When cayenne pepper raw, is used whether in powdered form or crush the fruit of cayenne pepper and put on the tongue, immediately blood vessels open up with good blood circulation. And once we have good circulation in natural health care, good circulation of good food equals good health because that is when food can be properly digested and assimilated. So when we choose plant-based foods and we have good circulation, then the food is properly digested, properly absorbed, and be used by the cells in the body. So when we use cayenne pepper to season our food, it is best and good to use it raw. That is, we can have powdered cayenne pepper and sprinkle on top of the food or mix with a little water, a little warm water before beginning to eat. It prepares the digestive system for the food that we are bringing into it. There are other kinds of flavors. Thyme is another wonderful herb, very powerful, pungent herb. It's very therapeutic too. It helps for headache. Usually I tell people when you go to homes as medical missionaries in training and then you have a person with a headache, ask, do you have thyme in the kitchen? Because most people have thyme in the kitchen to season their food. And you can take a teaspoon of that thyme, boil water, add the thyme to the hot water, the boiling water, and cover it for about 10 minutes and drink. Very, very wonderful thing for headache. Why am I discussing these spices and healthy herbs with medicine? It is Aristotle identified as the father of medicine that says, let food be your medicine and your medicine food. Now, if we are able to use these herbs as medicine, we can also use them as food. But then, if they are very strong like cinnamon, like hot pepper, then though we can use them as medicine, some of them, they should be left alone until when they are needed as medicine. And not to consistently and on and on is the term to use them as seasonings for our food. Because what will happen it will be irritating our intestinal walls continuously. And we may not realize that we are having that problem until it becomes a big one. If we overindulge in the use of pungent herbs for the seasoning of our foods, like hot peppers, curry powders, other hot irritating spices, they are harmful because our membranes in our digestive organs are very delicate. So they will irritate them. And what happens also with our taste buds? 
they deaden them. There are individuals that I have met who will never feel pepe, though all of you are running <laughs> your nose and cleaning your nose with mucus, mucus is coming out and you are draining and that person tells that there's no pepe in this food. There's no pepe in this food. It isn't enough. And it's still adding and adding because the taste buds have become dead to a large extent. The front of our tongue, we immediately taste sweet. At the side, we immediately taste salt. At the back, we taste the bitter things that enters into the top of our tongues when they are wet. But pepe is all over and all the others will be dead. Even the saltiness will be gone. That means that person will oversalt his or her food. That means the person will need a lot of sweet to get the food tasty because a lot of the highly pungent, irritating herbs have been used a lot as spices, as seasonings. They should be seasonings because they should make our food tastier. They should bring out the flavor. We should not be tasting the herb or the seeds, the bark, whatever we are using as seasoning in the food. Just like we should not be tasting salt in our food. If we taste salt in our food, that salt is far too much. It, sh it should enhance the flavor. That is not the food that we are eating. Therefore, when we start tasting it, then that is a signal to tell us that it's too much. There is also another product or substance that is used to season vegetables especially that does not do well in our gastrointestinal tract and that is vinegar. Many people soak their lettuce, cabbages before they make salad in vinegar. It is not healthy at all. We are talking about health and the use of seasonings, our spices, to help enhance the flavor of our food. And when it becomes detrimental, harmful to our body, then we should not use them because we can easily substitute them. For instance, vinegar. The same taste and the same feeling that we get from vinegar when we use it for our salad, we get the same thing with the juice of lemon. A lemon is healthy. Lemon is loaded with antioxidants, phytonutrients, good for the cells, good for our body, that is, in the long run, when it is good for the cells, but vinegar is not. The acidic content of vinegar is too tough for our stomach and every aspect of the tract that takes care of processing our food. And when we indulge in it, on and on, we begin to feel the effect, whether within a short time or in the long term effect. So vinegar comes from the French words, two words, vin and erg. Um, I don't know how to speak French very well, just an idea. Just to know that it is alcohol, essentially. And what do alcohol do when they get into our system? A lot of harm. Alcohol harms up every cell that alcohol comes in contact with in our body, it kills it virtually. And it does not allow our food to be properly digested because the type of acid that digests our food is different from the one that comes with vinegar. And therefore, it gives us a lot of problem. I always keep in mind the fact that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And anything that will unbalance the balance called homostasis in our body will cause us ill health. So when we're talking about health, everything matters, even what we use to enhance the flavor of our food. In this program, Nature's Bounties, it is our hope to share all those things that can help us so that we can make good choices because if we have the choices that are available and we say this is better than the other then we give credence to what is good and then education 
will allow us to make better choices than if we do not know that such things exist. So in order to have very good tastes from our food, in order to enhance the flavor, there's natural flavor in food, no doubt about that. God has put all those things in there. If we appreciate it naturally and then eat it as it's were from nature, that's even far better. But then there are times when because of old habits, because of the things that we have accustomed to, because our taste buds have been trained in a particular line, we still need to put some seasoning in our food so that we can enjoy our food. But we must make good choices. And when we make good choices, then our health can be helped. There are a few herbs I would like to mention before I close today. And there is one I love to read about called saffron. I understand that saffron is the most expensive herb, seasoning herb that is available and also used as therapeutic herb for medicine. And that if one will smell saffron for about 20 minutes, even several ailments will be helped. There are some things that God has packaged in some herbs more than others. For instance, I love peppermint, whether in the leaf form or in the essential oil form. Breathing in peppermint oil enhances health so much. If there is sneezing or coughing or any nasal and lung issue, peppermint oil will help a lot. Peppermint tea is a wonderful soother of the gastrointestinal tract, especially the stomach. And yet, these are simple herbs. There are some herbs that we can use more than others because they are simpler, they are not as pungent, and then they season the food. And there are some that we use as medicine as well as food. I've mentioned a few, but let me add a few more. There is also the cumin. Cumin is very good for both pastry seasoning and for stew and stews. I love cardamom when it is used in the pastry. And then there are others that the fenugreek. Fenugreek is very wonderful. Even the smell of fenugreek in your soup, anyone entering your house will ask, what are you cooking? And yet it's going to be a simple meal and yet the smell will reach out where others. And then too, the taste is wonderful. Then there's the old favorite onions and garlic. Some don't like garlic because of the smell. But you know, if you cut the garlic and you put it in the stew, it's not going to smell like when it is raw again. And onions is a wonderful healer. And it is a wonderful thing that we can use to season our food. I have been taught to avoid the curry powder because of the content and what has been used to put in together to make the curry. Of course, the wonderful turmeric is inside the curry. That's what gives it its yellow color. But well, why don't we use the turmeric itself? So many scientific studies have been done on turmeric. In its raw form, wonderful. When dried and powdered, it's easier to use. And we can use it to season our food and to give wonderful color to the food. Then, turmeric is a powerful antioxidant that enables the destruction of those free radicals that will form tumors in the body. A half teaspoon of turmeric for a person per day is good in the food and sometimes people make it as tea. In fact, others rub it on their bodies to keep their skin clear and looking supple and nice. If our medicine is our food and our food is our medicine, turmeric is a very good example of that. And when used continuously, it does not have any bad effect. Some say that add a little bit of cayenne pepper to it, and then it enhances even its work a little bit more. It's a potent stuff, no doubt about it. And the use of it continues to marvel many who have been using it in health conditions. The curcumin is the primary ingredient in turmeric. And research that I have come across have shown that though curcumin is the primary ingredient in turmeric, when turmeric is used whole and not just the curcumin alone, that there is more benefit in using it whole. Well, that follows the same principles of whole food. 
because yes, it's an important ingredient, but it's not the only ingredient. And when a particular ingredient is taken out of the package and it stands by itself, yes, it may do a lot of good, but then it's still not going to be as good as when it is taken whole. And that is why some will not want to recommend the use of curcumin alone, but the turmeric as a whole. And then when the attempt is made to extract the active ingredients that is found to be what is needed for health, many times toxic chemicals get into the product in the, in the, in the method that is used to process the thing that is being extracted. Then of course, it becomes more expensive. Turmeric is very easy to, to cultivate. If we get a turmeric, it grows like ginger. If the tuber is bought in the market and gets a piece of uh, soil in the ground in the house, plant them, they grow very easily. They don't need a lot of care for their growth and they will yield very well and will have a lot of turmeric to use. Some are told, don't use turmeric if you have gold stones already because of the action of turmeric, it will make gallstone situation more painful. That's an example that I have read about that will not be good to use turmeric. Well, we can go on and on to cite many examples, but let's use this principle to guide us in our choices because we have different localities with different things available. If it is good as food, if it is good as medicine, then we can use it in moderate quantity. If it is fermented, it should be used in the least amount of quantity, if at all, because fermented products, fermented food, have other problems associated with it. Though they make food tastier, but nevertheless, it should be used in the minimal amount, if at all. That is the recommendation. So those beans that we have fermented, that we use locally, they may be good for seasonings, but then we have to use them in the minutest amounts so that we do not face the repercussions of fermentation. The Lord help us to continue to gain more knowledge about all of these things so that indeed we can remain in good health and yet enjoy our food. May the Lord bless us continually as we seek to honor him and to live for him. It's my prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen.